everyone. This is O'Connor Vince here. Uh, today I'm going to be bringing Music T-Shirt Friday uh, into a little bit more of an unknown category. Uh, today I'm wearing the Icelandic post-rock band Siguros, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them and about some of their peers in the post-rock uh, genre category. So this is their website. Um, they do a lot of really cool um, experimental uh, kind of rock music. So what does that really mean, right? So it, it's not necessarily rock in the traditional sense where you have a uh, form that's uh, pretty formulaic. So having a verse and a chorus and a verse and a bridge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this music kind of uh, explores more of what we call like a soundscape or trying to uh, equate it to some kind of environment. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. Um, but just going through some of Siguros's work uh, here, they had they had an album dedicated to trying to replicate sleep. Uh, they also had an album where they toured most of Iceland and they had this whole 24 hour project where they would create music uh, to that environment. So again, a little bit more experimental, not necessarily something that you would, uh, you know, rock out to um, with your friends in the car singing or whatnot, but more music to be reflective, uh, to kind of explore uh, um, experimentation a little bit more, uh, something that you can definitely check out um, when you have some downtime. So. Let me just play you a little bit here. So this is their uh, YouTube page. Um, I did want to show you a little bit of um, one of their videos. Uh, but before I get into that, I wanted to just show you this graph. <clears throat> now, many of you have probably seen this graph in English language arts class or an English class uh, depicting a book. Um, so we have the exposition or the beginning, right? Conflict, rising action, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, climax, the top, where does the story kind of have the big event that changes uh, the story? And then the falling action and the resolution, usually that character has some kind of closure. Um, so with that, we can also equate this to music, whether it's a concept album or telling a story. Uh, Post-rock also kind of explores this a little bit more. So the idea that we have this kind of arc in our music. You'll see a lot of the music that I show you today is longer works, um, and that is done to try and depict this arc. Uh, so the, one of the first websites that I want to show you if you're interested in just learning a little bit more about post-rock in general is this website called musicmap.info. Now I use this website uh, teaching music tech, history of rock and history of hip hop. Um, as you can see, we have uh, tons of different genres here. If I click on alternative, uh, and again, alternative music kind of blossomed out of the late eighties, early nineties, uh, experimenting with punk and rock music and kind of what that looked like. Uh, what we're interested in is this idea of um, post-rock. So I'm going to click post-rock. Oh, I'll show you this first. So when you click on a genre, you have um, a summary here of the genre. Uh, usually it takes like five to ten minutes to read. And if I click on a subgenre, it'll bring up... Um, the description or summary for that genre. So again, 1995, so again, 80s, 90s. Uh, and it tells you again a, a little summary here in that subgenre. It also gives you a playlist. Um, so three of the bands that I'm going to highlight today are actually on this playlist uh, Siguros, the shirt I'm wearing, uh, Explosions in the Sky, and Godspeed You Black Emperor. Okay. So this is something that's really cool to explore. You can also zoom in here. When you zoom in, you can hover over a subgenre and you can see how it's kind of connected. 
you can zoom all the way in like this so you can actually see it. Um, <clears throat> so again, this kind of gives you more of a visual uh, context in terms of what is connected, uh, what the genre sounds like, and historically where it came from as well. So again, that's musicmap.info. One thing I just want to highlight from this summary here from post-rock, uh, again, if we click the subgenre and you scroll down a little bit, um, so post-rock revolted against both the self-indulgent attitude of alternative rock bands more concerned with coolness than sound and the greedy commercial bands composing whatever sells best. So again, the idea that they really were trying to be experimental and kind of push musical boundaries. Uh, the songs are almost hypnotic, taking the listener on a musical voyage. So again, thinking about that plot, uh, plot story map, um, that's really something that parallels with post-rock. Uh, and they go on to talk about kind of different techniques and instrumentation that uh, the experimental uh, bands use here. Okay, so back on the Seguros uh, YouTube page, um, I just want to show you one of my favorite uh, videos here. Um, and again, you'll notice this, uh, this um, song is actually a little bit shorter at 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Shorter, not longer, right? Now, compared that to your average rock or hip-hop or pop song, that is longer, right? Um, so again, the idea of kind of exploring sound and uh, not having um, something that's so formulaic, something that's a little bit more experimental. So usually it starts kind of, so you can hear how it's starting to build even there. Um, I don't want to play you the whole thing because I want you to go listen to this on your own, obviously. Um, but I will show you kind of like what the uh, towards the end sounds like. I also forgot to mention I've I've seen this band a couple times um, live and they are phenomenal. And again, kind of understanding the uh, exploration of uh, sound and the experimentation that they go through on stage is really phenomenal. Um, so again, it kind of builds. Okay, so the next band I want to show you uh, is called Explosions in the Sky. Uh, and again, I have seen them live too. Again, phenomenal. Um, Sigurós is from Iceland and they actually uh, sing in Icelandic. Uh, Explosions in the Sky is more focused on the instrumental aspect. So uh, just looking at some of their discography here, you can see some of their stuff is Friday Night Lights. Uh, from movies or TV shows. And again, it kind of has that um, cinematic experience uh, with um, music, which is really awesome. So again, thinking of that arc. So let's check out a little bit of their music. So again, this is just one video and I don't want to play the whole thing. Um, but I really, this is like one of their only like music videos and I really like um, how it kind of explores a uh, different era and kind of presents it uh, very artistically. So this is Postcard from 1952. So again you can hear kind of that slow build. Again I'm just going to fast forward just so you can kind of see where uh, all this kind of goes towards. So again, you can think about um, the story plot map in terms of the arc of the story there, which is really important. And one really cool thing about Explosions in the Sky, if you YouTube search Explosions in the Sky, uh, their NPR concert will come up. Um, and it's a full hour, almost and a half of uh, their live show that you can watch on YouTube. So this is something that I highly encourage you to check out. 
um, especially like I said, you this is music that you really want to um, listen to fully and not necessarily uh, be doing something else. You really want to kind of uh, almost like meditate when you listen to this music. This music is supposed to be um, kind of an art form rather than uh, music to quote bop to, right? Um, so again, I highly recommend uh, watching this concert uh, in full and just kind of really, like I said, exploring uh, the experimentation and uh, musicality that these musicians have is just unreal. Okay, so the last group I want to introduce you to is Godspeed You Black Emperor. Now, um, I would argue, and this is again looking at their website, you can see their whole discography here on the left hand side. Um, I would argue that this is probably the darkest sounding group. Okay, and finally, a little Godspeed you Black Emperor. Again, notice the time, 10 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, again, a longer work, right? Uh, words like voyage, uh, that story plot map, it's telling you a complete story. So again, I'll just play a little bit for you here, kind of spot check it throughout so you can kind of see how that grows and how it changes. Fast forward, let's say halfway or so through. You can hear how that climactic kind of arc there, right? And when you finally get to that second melody, it kind of gives you a sense of relief almost. Um, and again, just kind of fast forwarding here. Didn't I tell you they were probably the darkest sounding group out of the bunch, right? So again, kind of mixing more punk elements along with uh, the alternative rock and um, kind of post-rock mixture here. One melody kind of breaks apart and fades out towards the end there. Um, another really cool thing to do with uh, music like this, um, if you have time or if you are an artist of some sort, this is really great music to draw to or to paint to um, because I feel like even with the lack of lyrics, it kind of paints a story, right? So you can really put uh, endless amounts of different imagery uh, with this music or write a story, right? You can do that too. It doesn't have to be art. Um, you can write uh, a short story kind of, again, reflecting different musical aspects of uh, this work. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed Music T-Shirt Friday. Bye guys.